Almost 48 hours ago, the last Boeing 747 rolled off the production floor, subsequently ending over half a century of consistent production and deliveries. A monumental time for the aircraft manufacturer that said goodbye to the Queen of the Skies forever. But why did such a critical aircraft really have to see production end? It would mean a lot if you haven't already to subscribe to the channel as we're on our way to 14,000. Let's begin with industry trends. The Boeing 747 and other super jumbos alike have certainly been in their twilight phase for some time now. And one could argue that for the 7478 and the Airbus A380, by the time they actually arrived into the industry, the era of the Super Jumbo was already beginning to fade away slowly but surely. This can be down to several different contributing factors. But industry trends have shifted dramatically in the past couple of decades. Once an age where the primary option for long haul was a quad-engined Boeing product. Now, the possibilities are limitless, and leading the way at both Boeing and Airbus are no longer quad-engine planes, but wide-body, twin-engined aircraft, capable of completing 19-hour flights with efficiency blowing these four-engine planes out of the water. While aircraft like the Boeing 747 of course benefit from having higher capacity over say a Boeing 787, the reality is there are many difficulties in actually having the higher capacity result in a customer seeing operating profitability with the plane. What this means is that large aircraft such as these only work in specialized markets. Markets that, say, can make these aircraft work well. So while not centered on the 747, but very much applicable to the Super Jumbo conversation, what Emirates has done with their A380 series highlights how such a plane that has globally not worked as well has instead excelled in a market that is fit for its purpose. Apply that to, say, the 7478 in this scenario. It highlights, yes, its strengths in specific areas, but also very much its core weaknesses and how immediately you're ruling out a significant amount of potential customer interest as it's only applicable in a certain niche. Whereas for a plane like the Boeing 777, which now is definitely getting on in terms of age, or your newer 787s, and even moving across to the Airbus A350, well, they're twin-engine planes that offer any customer looking to purchase a wide-body far more flexibility than what they would receive by purchasing a Boeing 747 in this era of flight. United Airlines extensively flies the 787 series worldwide and is at the time of recording looking to purchase additional units in this family. They operate all three variants, but they actually use them in different ways that benefit their network and operations. The Dash 10 is the family's largest member, therefore it has the highest seat capacity and can be subsequently seen on a flight from Newark to say Los Angeles, while the Dash 9 can fly from Los Angeles to Melbourne or even sometimes can be seen on shorter services. Airlines benefit from the improved efficiency but also the ability to be versatile with this next generation of aircraft in a way that will see them reap the rewards. Sure, the Boeing 747 was an aircraft that maybe had these capabilities many decades ago, but the key lies in it being many decades ago. Unfortunately, the plane is not what it once was to customers, and this has been evident through the lack of sales for the passenger version of the 7478, which saw production actually cease many years ago. It's worth noting that it's only the freighter variant of the newer 7478 family that has kept the name alive in a production sense. Meanwhile, over at European aircraft manufacturer Airbus, they ceased production on their A380 almost a year ago now, the difference being there was never an A380 freighter that was produced. Demand for quad-engined planes simply isn't there anymore, especially from passenger airlines. They've found new, more effective aircraft for their operations, and with the risks associated with taking on, say, a Boeing 747, the biggest being the need to fill the plane on every flight, for most airlines, and especially following the pandemic, it's just not an option that makes a whole lot of sense. Again, this cannot be applied to every airline, as the 747 does remain flying with some select customers, but generally speaking, I think we can all agree that the emergence of the global pandemic only highlighted what we already knew about the Queen. 
and that was it's a dying breed of an aircraft and certainly in its twilight. The pandemic saw an onslaught of retirements, but most notably I'd argue Qantas, KLM and British Airways all announcing the immediate retirement of this 747 fleet definitely came as a shock to many enthusiasts, but it's one that definitely showcased to us the valid concerns over continuing to fly such a plane in such a market. There are calls from Emirates' executives for a new larger plane to be built, something like the A380, but more efficient. But you see, aircraft manufacturers are not really budging. Their focus has undoubtedly shifted elsewhere, and that's another critical point to this analysis. Focus is no longer sat on creating these 500 plus seater giants. Generally speaking, they're looking towards efficient wide body and narrow body planes that are capable of completing long range admissions at a fraction of the cost, while also seeing sustainability beat the forefront of these conversations. As manufacturers explore SAF being sustainable aviation fuel, battery technology, hydrogen and so much more which is going to be so important for the future eras of flight. As Boeing wraps up their 747 programs, we know that the 747 will remain in our skies for quite some time. However, it must be said that its presence will be mostly felt over the freighter market as it continues to be routinely operated with leading companies such as UPS and Atlas Air, among others like Cargo Lux, with the final 7478 freighter set to be delivered to Atlas Air early next year. Even as the plane will eventually depart from the Boeing factory for the final time and definitely heads into the twilight of its career, its impact is unmistakable and it changed aviation, so therefore at the very least it will hardly be forgotten anytime soon. I encourage you to use the comment section to share your fondest memories of the Boeing 747 as a series of aircraft. It could be, say, your time flying on it, maybe a memorable spotting journey, or something else. For me personally, I know I would not be here today recording this video on globetrotting and would have never started DJ's Aviation if it wasn't for the Boeing 747. It got me into aviation very much so, and it's therefore got a very, very close place to my heart. To see it disappear from our skies is incredibly disappointing, but it is a direction that we need to head to see our industry continue to develop in more positive ways. Thank you very much for watching. We really appreciate the support here on Globetrotting and look forward to bringing more analysis coverage to your screens in the near future.